Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today I have two stories for you, both with epic updates from the Am I the Butthole subreddit. Before we start that, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and you can always change your mind later. All right, on to the stories. Let's jump right in. This story comes to us from Exciting Ice 9119 Am I the butthole for cutting my mother-in-law off because she told my daughter she hoped I had died when I was taken to hospital? I, 30 female, was in a car crash. I had to be cut out of the car. I wasn't seriously injured though, thankfully, but the other person unfortunately wasn't doing too well from what I saw before I was taken away to the hospital. I was told to stay in the hospital overnight to see if I suffered from a concussion. I rang my husband and told him what happened. My mother-in-law got the incidents mixed up when he dropped off our daughters 6 and 11 to my mother-in-law while he rushed to see me. Next morning, my husband rang our daughters to come get me while I was waiting to be discharged. Upon seeing me, my six-year-old busted into tears and said, I don't want you to die. I comforted her and said, I'm not dying, and I was very lucky. She then said, Granny said she hoped I die so that them and my husband can come live with her. Me and my husband were shocked, and my 12-year-old confirmed she heard her say that. My husband said he was going to ring mother-in-law. When he came back in the room, he looked furious, but didn't say anything until after we got home. And he said mother-in-law denied it, but after he kept pushing, she ended up admitting it. But she said she didn't mean it. I thought me and her were close, but I guess not. I am incredibly hurt she would want that and said I wanted me and the girls to go no contact with mother-in-law. I told him he can have a relationship with her, but I don't want me and the girls to have one with her. My husband said he supports me. He then rang mother-in-law and told her what I said. She didn't take it too well. She came to our house crying and saying it was a misunderstanding and she didn't mean it and that we were taking it the wrong way. My husband asks, what do you mean then? She just got hysterical and started crying and saying she always wanted daughters but my husband was the only child due to her not being able to have any more after him, and that the girls are more like her daughters than granddaughters, and she wasn't thinking properly when she said that to our six-year-old. She got so worked up that my husband had to take her home. When he got back, he said he didn't know she felt like that and asked, did I still want to cut her off? I said yes. He said okay and didn't argue. But it's been a week now and he is still very quiet and hasn't said much about what happened. And now I'm starting to feel guilty and wondering if I did take it the wrong way. Am I the butthole? Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there's one from a user called Laquila. It says, she traumatized your child. It was horrifying for your daughter to hear that. Bad enough her mom was in the hospital after a car accident. As a young child, she likely had a whole lot of frightening scenarios going through her mind unable to properly process that. Your daughter needed assurance and positivity, not what that disgusting harridan said. Mother-in-law did mean it. You don't blurt something like that out out of misunderstanding or as a joke. That whole hysterical outburst she put on in front of you, that was bullcrap, manipulative bullcrap, because she got caught. And it seems to have worked on your husband because she's trained, brainwashed him that way. Stand your ground. She needs at the very least a good long time out. Do not let your husband or anyone sweep this under the rug because doing that would make everyone think it's perfectly okay for mother-in-law to hope you died, for your daughters to lose their mom. That's sickening. I'd make that time out at least six months. Heck, make it for the rest of this year. So she loses out on big holidays at the very least. What a vile effing cow not the butthole. Another commenter down below called that hella high hobbit <laughs> said, not the butthole. Why would you feel guilty? She wished you dead out loud to your child so she could have a child with woman parts. That's so beyond effed up. Hopefully your husband realizes how absolutely effed that is and cuts her off too. OP, I don't think your husband's being quiet because of you. I think your husband has a lot of processing to do right now. I think he knows that the best thing to do is to cut her out of your lives completely. 
but that's his mom, so it's really hard to do. Guys don't really like to show their emotions. I know I don't, and when something's bothering me, I usually just go pretty quiet myself. So take that with a grain of salt. I'm completely not denying that your mother-in-law is absolutely nutso though. That is not something you say in front of young children about their mother. You are perfectly well within your right to cut her out completely. Your kids don't need somebody like that in their lives. All right, OP has updated this one twice. Let's jump into the first one now. This update is titled, Update, Am I the Butthole for Cutting Off My Mother-in-Law Because She Told My Daughter She Hoped I Had Died When I Was Taken to Hospital. Well, you guys were right. I decided to talk to my husband and asked if he's upset that I decided that me and the girls go no contact with mother-in-law. He said he wasn't. He said he always knew mother-in-law wanted a daughter instead of him. And it brought back all the bad memories of rejection and hurt he felt growing up as a kid by her. I suggested therapy and he's willing to go. We are also going to get therapy for our six-year-old as she now gets anxious if I'm not within her sight. My husband agreed that going no contact with mother-in-law is the best thing for our family. Our daughter's birthday is coming up and we have yet to tell mother-in-law she is no longer invited. Not looking forward to that. But that's the update. Thanks everyone for the lovely comments and support. I appreciate it. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there's one from a user called Dannyvel. It says, Suggestion, maybe take your daughter out of town for her birthday to a nearby attraction. Zoo, play, something on special for her birthday, instead of a party or a party on a later date with her little friends instead of family. If you're not there, mother-in-law can throw all the witch fit she wants and nobody will be there to see her, and there's no party for her to ruin. Another user below called Checking In On The Memes said, Not the butthole. I cut off my mother and brother after they said, I should have died in the car accident. If someone wishes you dead, do them the favor and get out of their life. OP, this comment right here is the one that I recommend you follow. It's just a question of saying, hey, you wished I was dead, so now you can just pretend that all of us are dead, because as far as we're concerned, we are to you. Alright, let's get into OP's final update. This one is titled, Update 3, Am I the Butthole for Cutting Off My Mother-in-Law Because She Told My Daughter She Hoped I Had Died When I Was Taken to Hospital. I didn't think I would be posting here again and thought my last date would be my last, but here we are. Mother-in-law has been arrested. My husband's cousin found my post and knew it was me, and she reported it straight to mother-in-law. Yeah, we know it was you who told her, Christina. Margaret told us all about it when she came over, and screaming we can't keep her daughters from her. She didn't even hesitate to drop your name and throw you under the bus. So much for loyalty, huh? You are not welcome in our home anymore, and you are officially removed from Sam's birthday list and our lives. How about you show the whole family this post so they can see how two-faced you are? To the Reddit community, sorry about that, but mother-in-law has been arrested. She came to our house screaming, we can't keep her daughters from her. Husband tried to calm her down and get her to leave. She wouldn't and attacked him. My husband had to restrain her and I called the police. She fought them, but it got her nowhere except the back of their car. The woman is truly insane. My husband talked to the police because I had to calm down my daughters because they witnessed the whole thing. My six-year-old was hysterical about Granny being taken away. This is all just a big mess. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there's one from a user called Wild E. Piote. <laughs> it says, My daughters? What the actual F? Woman needs committed. Also, F you, Christina. Another commenter down below called DashondMom5 says, Make sure you press charges and file a restraining order. If she is actually mentally ill, that's for her lawyer to handle to plea her into help. The restraining order is needed. OP, I am so sorry that you're in this situation. Now is the time to change all of your locks, make sure you have cameras, and make sure that your kids know what to do if they ever see her again because they need to run screaming in the opposite direction as fast as they can. This story comes to us from Creepy Wife Throwaway. Am I the butthole for calling my father's wife a creep? 
My, 32 female, father, 60s, has been married to Sasha, fake name, 40s, for almost a decade. I was already an adult when they started seeing each other, so I never had much of a relationship with her. That said, Sasha was nice and thoughtful, though a bit annoying at times, and I never had any problems with her. I now have a husband, 34 male, and two kids, 9 male and 4 female. Sasha is very fond of my children, especially my daughter. That became very suffocating pretty quickly, so we started setting some boundaries. She never overstepped them. In January, my father and Sasha decided to go on a trip to Disney World and invited us to join them. We decided to go to celebrate our son's 9th birthday. I quickly regretted coming along. Sasha spent the entire trip fussing over my daughter in ways that overstepped almost every boundary we'd set. Examples include, Sasha bought a mini ears tiara. She wanted me to buy my daughter an identical one so they could match. My daughter didn't like the tiara, so I bought her a Donald Duck hat instead. Sasha got her the tiara anyway and was upset that she didn't want to wear it. My father and Sasha went shopping in between parks. I told them not to buy my kids anything as we still had shopping to do and didn't want to risk making our bags too heavy. Still, Sasha returned with five bags of clothing for my daughter and two for my son, saying she couldn't resist it. My daughter wanted a Belle costume to wear at the parks as that's her favorite princess. Sasha tried to convince us to get her an Ariel costume instead because that's her favorite. I explained that we never watched The Little Mermaid at home because my daughter is scared of Ursula. Sasha insisted on taking dozens of pictures with my daughter in front of the castle at Magic Kingdom. She also took some with my son, but not nearly as many. She tried to convince us to take our daughter to Biddity Bobbity Boutique. We refused because the prices are crazy and we'd already bought her the Belle costume. She offered to pay, but we held our ground. I later found out Sasha tried to make a reservation anyway, but there was no availability. When we took our daughter to Slinky Dog Dash, her first roller coaster, Sasha tried to sit next to her. My daughter wanted to sit with me, so we switched. She tried to do the same thing in other attractions. At the Muppets Theater, she tried to get my daughter to sit in her lap. Sasha also tried to pick her up while we met some of the characters. There were more instances. The final straw for me, however, was the last park day of the trip. We were at Magic Kingdom. My husband suffered a minor injury and I had to take him to the first aid station. The kids wanted to go to the Peter Pan ride, so my dad and Sasha offered to take them in the meantime. However, according to my father, the line was too long. So instead, Sasha suggested the Little Mermaid ride, assuring my kids Ursula wasn't on it. Actually, there's a pretty big Ursula animatronic there. My daughter was still sobbing and hugging her brother when we reunited. When we flew back home, I told my father that we'd no longer take our children on trips with Sasha due to her behavior. He got extremely angry. He said his wife loved my kids, thought about what they'd like to do at every moment of the trip, and that we should be grateful to have her in our lives. I lost my temper at that. I told him Sasha was an effing creep and that they should be grateful I was still okay with them even seeing my children after her actions during the trip. We ended up having a huge fight after that. It's been weeks since we returned home and my father is still angry at me and my husband. Sasha has texted me a few times. She says she's sorry if she made me uncomfortable, but that she loves my kids and hope to use the trip to spend more time with them. To be honest, I don't think I'm the butthole here, but I do think I might have overreacted. I believe there's a chance Sasha's actions were motivated by love and she truly did have good intentions. Am I the butthole? Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there's one from a user called Significant Cat 3. It says, not the butthole. You set some pretty clear boundaries that Sasha kept crossing the entire trip. Even your daughter seems to not be particularly receptive towards her. Also, your son can probably pick up on this favoritism, and that's not good for him either. I don't mean to do armchair psychology, but this reads like Sasha has always wanted a young daughter and is using yours to live vicariously through. 
hence why she kept trying to push things that your daughter doesn't like onto her. Tierra, Little Mermaid Ride, etc. OP responded to this one and said, My son doesn't like Sasha. I'm not sure why, but I think he gets that she favors my daughter. He's also very protective of his sister, so her discomfort could also be a reason. Another commenter below called Beautiful Story 2811 said, Not the butthole. She sounds exhausting, but, but, she also doesn't seem like a truly awful person. So, we started setting some boundaries. She never overstepped them. Question, does she have children of her own? She probably sees your kids as a chance to play mommy if she's never had kids. She may not even be aware of exactly how intrusive she's being. Looks like there's a 20-year age gap between she and your dad. She probably thought she'd be okay with not having kids. I'm guessing your dad may have told her he's done having babies. But your little ones, especially your daughter, may have just stirred up those feelings and she's trying to compensate. I still don't think you're the butthole, but maybe have an honest talk with her. Just you and her. And try and show a little grace. My apologies if you've done all that already, and she's still being a pill. OP responded to this one and said, You're right about a lot of things. She doesn't have kids. My dad doesn't want more children. And while she's defined herself as child-free before, she's also told me she always wondered what having a daughter would be like. My husband and I started setting boundaries because the situation was really bad when my daughter was younger. She'd wake her up from her naps when she visited, post pictures of her on social media without our approval, and complain about almost every parenting decision we'd make because it wasn't how she'd do it. I agree that a conversation needs to be had here. OP needs to decide if they're cutting off contact altogether or just cutting it back hugely so that their daughter can have a regular life. I don't feel like this mother-in-law is as crazy as the one from the previous story, but there's definitely signs that it could be going in that direction. Alright, OP updated this one, let's jump into that now. The update is titled, Update, Am I the Butthole for Calling My Father's Wife a Creep? Hey everyone, I'm ready to give you an update. I read your comments and came to the following conclusion. As much as Sasha's behavior towards my children angered me and freaked me out, Calling her a creep was the wrong reaction to have. That said, I think it's best for my family to distance itself from Sasha for the time being. And at the very least, my previous decision to avoid future trips with her, based on the Disney trip, is still the best course of action. Sasha's pushiness, tendency to override mine and my husband's parenting, and blatant favoritism towards my daughter were much worse when the kids were younger. After my daughter's birth, she began to focus too much attention on her and almost none on my son. I gave more examples of that in the comments on my original post. That's the reason we set boundaries in the first place. Her fixation on my daughter also bothers me. When we had the boundary conversation with my father and Sasha, she told us that she'd always wondered what having a daughter would be like. She also defined herself as child-free before, so I was never certain what to think of that. Either way, that reassured me and my husband that we were doing the best for our kids. Those boundaries had never overstepped. Then we went on the Disney trip, and most of them were completely ignored. Many of you pointed out that she might have gotten carried away, or that Disney is exciting and she wanted to make sure my kids had the best experience, etc. There are two things I'll say to that. The first is that whatever Sasha's reasons were, she still overstepped our boundaries. When we first set those, we told her that doing so would have consequences. Disney or not, I don't see a reason to make an exception. Secondly, she wasn't trying to ensure my kids had the best experience. She was pushing them to fulfill her fantasy of what their Disney trip should look like. She repeatedly ignored my children's wishes in favor of her own despite them both being very clear about what they wanted and didn't want. Sasha also continually favored my daughter, including during my son's birthday, and fussed over her in ways that made her uncomfortable. And I still haven't forgiven the Little Mermaid thing. My daughter is a bit shy and takes a while to open up to most people, so knowing her trust was broken like that angers me in ways I can't describe. To put it in simpler terms, my children aren't props, and whoever treats them as such will, at the very least, 
be put in timeout. I called my father and Sasha on Saturday. I apologized for calling Sasha a creep, but told them that we needed some time apart. They won't see my family until my younger sister's birthday in late April. If that goes well, they'll be invited to my daughter's fifth birthday party in May. After that, we'll slowly work on re-establishing contact. I also said that if they overstepped our boundaries again, the consequences would be more dire. My father didn't take it well. I don't care. Sasha sent me a text with more apologies, followed by a request to, at least, FaceTime my kids every now and then. I said no. And to those who said my controlling behavior ruined the trip, my kids had an amazing time at Disney World. They're both still talking about it. My daughter keeps asking us to put her pictures with the characters she met up on the wall. And my son says he had the best birthday ever. I think that's it. Thank you for your advice and support on my first post. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there's one from a user called Tony Rains 80 It says, these are your kids and your rules, period. Another user down below called Canny One Moon said, you protected your children and that's the best thing you can do in any situation. I'm glad they're still talking about the trip despite favoritism and the Ursula animatronic, which means you and your husband managed to outshine all of that with wonderful memories. For the possible reconciliation, Everyone can act normal for a day, the birthday in late April, especially if they know there's a goalpost on that day. It's the behavior over time that counts. If they're still messaging you, requesting FaceTime calls, and calling you unreasonable despite you clearly saying you want no contact, you could begin a tally, one point for each request, and when it's X amount of points, they'll have their timeout extended because they obviously don't understand boundaries yet. OP responded to this one and said, That's great advice. We don't want to go no contact, but we will if our boundaries are disrespected. Knowing my father, a tally wouldn't be well received. I'm doing my best to avoid turning this into a bigger fight. But that kind of system would probably make things worse. It might be worth a shot though. I'll talk to my husband about it. OP, I don't think your dad or Sasha need to know about the points at all. That's just a tally that you keep on your end. And when they get to the number that you've decided, you add time onto their timeout. I think you really need to take some advice from your kids here as well. Ask them how they feel about being around Sasha. If your daughter is completely uncomfortable about being around Sasha because of the tainted trust, well then, I think you know what you need to do. Did you know every single KCC video is uploaded in podcast form as well? You can search for Karma Comment Chameleon on every major podcasting platform. I thank you for watching and listening. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.